Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to present you not just the HMS Enterprise, but also want to give a big shout out to Siphon Signal, a guy that actually made not just the intro that I hope you enjoyed, I think that's worth giving the video a like, but also the outros of which I have three different versions so I can alternate between them. It's surely worth watching. I think it's really cool done. It kind of reflects a lot of the stuff that I'm into. And um, for me, this is kind of a big, a big change. And I have not just the outro here for ships, but also for planes and tanks. So um, I hope you are checking them out. If I don't mess it up, I think there is also the link to his little YouTube channel in the video description down below. Since he made this stuff for free for me, um, I think this is just fair that I mention him. Thank you, sir, for you know suffering through the weeks of uh, us setting this up. So there is also a bit of channel branding going on and uh, other things that might change in the upcoming future. Let me know what you think about in this in the comment section. The second thing is I want to render this video in 4K resolution. The first time that I tried it was with the KMS Empton two days ago. And um, yeah, let's talk about this as well in, you know, in a nutshell. <clears throat> But before this, um, what else was going on? Yeah, the ship, right, the uh, HMS Enterprise. I tried to get better footage, but then I was confronted with this one. Naval battles are temporarily unavailable due to technical reasons. We will inform you as soon as they are available again. Sorry for the inconvenience. Damn it, because I'm addicted to ships right now. I want to play nothing but ships. I mean, there are some planes that I'm still playing and maybe I have a look at a tank or two as well in the upcoming few days um hint hint russian hint hint and yeah um so i'm kind of left here with a gap um seems like people grinded too hard too fast or stuff was imbalanced um i wonder if it has to do with some of the patrol boats being equipped with 40 millimeters hmm i don't know but um let's talk about the heaviest light cruiser in war thunder currently at this moment and it is the first Royal Navy light cruiser, the HMS Enterprise. What a name. Please, you know, launch here all the Star Trek memes. Um, but honestly, I think it's a fine ship, but it has its own flavor. So it kind of misses things that the other ships have. The USS Trenton has the forward firepower. The KMS Empton has just a tankiness and it's just a brutal beast by itself. The long range Alpha Strike massive gun firepower is the Russian's flavor with the Kavkas at the moment. And this is kind of somewhere a hybrid. It, it kind of isn't too special, but it's certainly not bad. I still have to get a lot more experience in it. Hence, this is a first impressions, not a review. So I try to make the introduction here a bit shorter. It has the kind of normal 152 millimeter guns. Um, it has some secondaries. It has some quick firing guns. It also has some um, 40 millimeter two pounders um, in quadruple mountings, some 20 millimeter mountings, torpedoes. It's good at shooting down planes. It's good at uh, giving you know the enemy quite a beating with the HE damage and the AP damage. But again, this is currently going on some changes. The armor, well, here where the ammo is stored, there is a bit thick, a thicker 76.2 millimeters uh, Citadel armor, deck plating 25.4 and 25.4 millimeter bulkheads, I guess you uh, want to call them. So this is kind of, um, you know, separating the ships in numerous sections. Hence, it might actually give the ship a bit better survivability without having a turtle back. Then when we come to the X-ray, you can see big boiler room. It's long. There is ammunition storage. It is actually partially above the water line. So even a destroyer at close ranges can citadel you. The same goes for the other turrets where the magazines are right below. So um, in terms of shells, you can see we have six inch HE. We have then the 6-inch CPC and uh, CPBC. What the difference are, I have to f figure out, I guess. But um, the HE was pretty weak yesterday. Then it was buffed with a micro patch. The AP has significantly suffered, but not so much for the destroyers, especially the Hyder, the premium one. But for the cruisers, it kind of feels like it's missing some. 
and partially armor plays a role, which I approve, but we'll talk about this later. So, um, I think this is it with the introduction for the video, and let's have a look at some gameplay. So here we are on the Fiji map, and here you can see the very beautiful Krasny Kafkas from the Russians. You can see I spawned in the top left corner, and I want to make my way towards B. Um, this is not just my goal in distress, but also light cruisers. From there on, if you're good, you can dominate not just B, but also help out A. And if you're in a big ship with big guns, you also can influence partially the fight around C. A lot. Uh, of the wrong gameplay that I see has to do with destroyers going into the open sea and not going for the objectives where they can help out greatly their patrol boats and their uh, other destroyers mm, because of the um, power of their main batteries and secondaries and the anti-aircraft cover that they can provide. The patrol boat fight is substantial on this map and I like it but at some point if you have really worked for it, if you have the won the destroyer battle or you're one of the sneaky survivors, um, you can then obviously farm the patrol boats at A, but it takes a few minutes. Um, so a few of the issues that I have seen with the KMS Empton have been solved. We now see uh, enemy destroyers in larger numbers to be able to get shot by light cruisers. We see bigger teams, the battles last longer, um, the tide of the battle turns more often. I like this. Still, a lot of stuff has to be improved. My plan here is to actually now go into the direction of my destroyers and provide long range heavy alpha strike um, support for my destroyers. Um, in terms of crippling the enemy destroyers. So I think at this range uh, you cannot really reliably hit an enemy destroyer. Um, at least I can't. Um, because if they maneuver, if they turn, uh, if I don't uh, have the range set quite nicely. Or I just uh, didn't aim very careful enough. Um, including then the natural spread of the shells. To cripple an enemy destroyer is very much possible. To reliably destroy them, uh, regardless of the ammunition type that you use, is not so reliable. So what I want to do is to cripple them, reduce their main battery firepower by knocking out a turret, um, by you know killing their crew, lengthening their repair times, and you know where they try to fix the flooding and fire, as well as you know knocking out a torpedo tube, and knocking out their propulsion in particular. This slows them down, they give full broadside to my team, they're an easier target that doesn't shoot with, uh, back with so much firepower, so long range support it is, not long range kind of kill securing. Um, this is at least my plan, how it works out we'll see later on. Initially we just see enemy destroyers, um, at some point in the battle we'll actually have to fight briefly an enemy light cruiser and then um, we'll see how it goes. So at this point, I think to myself, okay, I need to look here into the other direction, uh, swing the back guns around and go closer to B. And still can uh, fire at the enemy. So aiming while you're turning is pretty difficult because the ship loses the momentum relatively late. So it's not like with a plane, if you look into another direction, you fly in another direction. The enemies, um, the ship has to actually lose its forward momentum with a side movement and, uh, you know, then go actually sideways. So this makes it, for me at least, a bit tricky to aim while in the turn because you expect, okay, I'm now moving in this direction and so the shells kind of take this uh, momentum with them, but they don't. So, um, yeah, here we can see that our destroyers are actually working over the enemy destroyers quite hard. I secured here one kill on the Fletcher with what seems like a crew knockout. And I think at this point in time you see the difference between this kind of um, cruiser and all the other cruisers. A Krasny Kafkas would stay in, um, at best at long range and tries to flood an enemy destroyer by ripping up the hull and um, you know forcing him to damage con and so then this will bleed the um, enemy's capabilities in damaging your kind of uh, 
teammates. Here we can see the US is strengthened. Now I switch here to armor piercing to test it out and we will see how this works. A bit of HE damage on the front two funnels, it's always nice. It forces him to repair them to actually get back the older speed. Now you can see that the armor piercing shells are out, but it is not enough plunging fire and it is not enough um, uh, completely flat broadside and short range to go through the armor either. So I don't go through the top plating and I don't go through the side plating. I think this is now the immune zone of the USS Trenton, if you can say it like this. And um, I load here now another salvo of AP afterwards. I try to finish him off with HE. 70% um, crew, so I think to myself, well, that's kind of a lot of uh, stuff that I have to um, kill on the enemy ship to have a decent result. One last AP salvo. So maybe now he gets less angled, but you never know. Um, after this salvo, I should actually decide to switch to HE. Yep, yeah, there we go. So, but just before then I reload, uh, some long range torpedo spam actually seems to work out. I dodged here the enemy's torpedoes and when the salvo is in the air, he gets blown apart. Now you can see there are not too many destroyers left, one respawned, two are um, in the open sea and I as the light cruiser are actually closest to B. The enemy team has also lost the fight here in, um, in, in the patrol boat area, which is very beneficial for us. Now I have to deal here with some patrol boats and uh, yeah, the AP times seem to be over because I tried it in previous battles, even with destroyers, I got sunk numerous times because I actually didn't see any notification of uh, AP having now reduced damage and now HE being the king in terms of patrol boat um, beat ups. As you might actually expect, you know, 6 inch HE shell, it's not a small shell. The gunners are firing through the islands and giving away the position of an enemy patrol boat, I guess. Um, I would already see a destroyer. Talking about a destroyer, another one has been blown up. The destroyers of our team that are now in the very north right corner, they have proven quite efficiently at taking out the enemy destroyers, but now they are out of the fight and they have a damn long time to go back. I'm about to enter here the capture zone while I seal clubbed some patrol boats. Um, I would love to fight bigger ships. I would love to continue getting better footage, getting more experience in the ship. But again, it's just the first impressions. As you saw, the patrol boats um, are now the only thing left. And I didn't expect this salvo actually to hit. But let's see. Yeah, there we go. Nice one shot. It was actually a hull break. Very interesting. Now, what do I think about ships? Well, I think it's much like with helicopters. It's something very new that we have to learn how to play with it. And um, that is in a few ways a good thing. But unlike helicopters, I personally have fun. I don't force here anybody to share my opinion. But for everybody that just thinks that is just driving in a straight line, dropping so some torpedo volleys into a random direction and just constantly try to uh, scroll down to adjust the range, well, you kind of have not understood the true power and capabilities of ships. Again, stuff has to change, but it's going into a right direction. And then we kill another patrol boat, it were actually the auto gunners, which are superbly useful. And you hear this, thr -thr 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 -th. that's actually the 40mm 2 pounders, which have proven to be very, very useful as secondaries, much like on the Fletcher class destroyers, including the Cowell. So very often, especially in close quarters, those 40mm Bofors or whatever version you have on any sort of ship with armor piercing or partially armor piercing has proven to be very very effective including the um, 37mm and 25mm autocannons from the Germans and the Russians as well but not as much. 
I think the 40 millimeters are really, really powerful. And the Jaguar 140 strich 141, the German one, or the LCS for the Americans, they're just the bane of any other patrol boat. Um, they're fast, maneuverable, and then have this ridiculous firepower. Yeah, I think that's kind of a bit too much, to be honest. So, uh, here I think I did my very best to have a good uh, impact on the gameplay with my 11 kills, 1 capture zone and 5 kill assists. The team bought me enough time to go into B. The team was playing really well together and um, in the, the next time I want to feature this ship with some either a kill compilation or a few more light cruisers versus light cruisers. That is actually the end of the gameplay. Now let's have a decent look at the results. And there we can see uh, Net just did get two backup vehicles, but also 57,000 civil lines, 4,614 research points, survivor award, many other awards. And yeah, I would get more vehicle research if I would not research a tier one one. So a uh, 15,099 ship damage 1961 score points that's a good result let me know in the comment section what you think about the whole navy thing my intro the uh incoming outro give this video a like if it did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the waves of war thunder